uh, chapter 1, section 1, ADEPT. Uh, this video we're going to talk about using calipers, specifically, these ones have a name, vernier calipers. Okay. Maybe you've seen a tool like this, but really what it's used, it's to measure the size of something, but more accurately than just eyeballing a ruler or a tape measure. So let's say you had a, a pipe and you wanted to measure the diameter of a pipe using these calipers. So here, these are called the jaws. Okay. And they would open up and you'd put the pipe there and then you'd close the jaws. And you would tighten that so it doesn't wiggle on you. And then what you do is you just read the numbers on the scale. And it's just like a regular ruler, only right down here, okay, this is called the sliding scale. Okay. And ultimately that is the one that you're going to read off of to get the final, more precise measurement. So here's how it works. A typical SI ruler, so your typical ruler that most kids have, it's only accurate to the nearest millimeter. Okay, that's as fine as it goes. So here's a ruler, but notice how the measurement that I want is not exactly on one of the millimeter markers, it's in between. So it's greater than 1.3 centimeters, because that would be 1.3 right here, okay, but it is less than 1.4 centimeters, which is right here. Okay. I could also say that in millimeters, so it's between 13 and 14 millimeters. All right. So we really just have to guess. Well, what these calipers will allow us to do, or what it'll give us, is these measurements right here, it'll give us one more decimal of accuracy. So here's how you actually read them. Okay. So vernier calipers, they are accurate to the nearest, not millimeter, but a tenth of a millimeter. So 0.1 millimeters, or it's the same as saying one hundredth of a centimeter. Okay, that's as accurate as it will give you. Okay. So here below, I actually have just the same ruler from up here, but I've attached the sliding scale. Okay. So the sliding scale is always read from where the zero marker is, right here. So the zero marker is still, of course, it's greater than 1.3 centimeters and less than 1.4 centimeters. Okay. We know that just by estimating it. But how do we get the last digit? Well, what you want to do is find the first marker on the sliding scale, so that's this piece right down here, to line up with a marker on the calipers. So the calipers up here. It's the, the big part. Okay. So let's look. Where does it first line up? Right here. I'll circle it. Okay. So you see this little mark here on the sliding scale. It lines up perfectly with those on here. And there are 10 of them. It's on the sixth one. Okay. So therefore, our measurement is 1.36 centimeters. Or I could also say 13.6 millimeters. Okay. If you're not quite clear how that works, don't worry, it'll come in time. The best way, of course, is just to practice. So we'll do a few more. Okay, so what is the measurement given on here? Okay. So this is a set of vernier calipers. We just haven't drawn the uh, jaws or anything. We don't need that. We just want to be able to read it. So the measurement is right here. It's where the zero is on the sliding scale. So that's what we're trying to measure. Well, look where it's positioned. So this is one centimeter. That's two centimeters. Each of these increments here is one millimeter. So notice how it is larger than 1.4, but a little bit less than 1.5. Okay. So we know that it has to be 1.4 something. Okay. There's one more digit here. So how do we get that extra digit of accuracy? Well, we just look. See all these little increments on the sliding scale and the main ruler here? Where do they first line up perfectly? Uh, right here. I'll circle them. Okay. And there are 10 increments on the sliding scale, and they happen to line up on the eighth one. So that means this last digit here is an 8. And that should make sense because look where the 0 is. It is much closer to 1.5 than it is to 1.4. So it stands to reason that this number should be 
well, close to 9. So this is 1.48 centimeters. Or if you want to express that in millimeters, that would be 14.8 millimeters. So that's how you read vernier calipers. Okay, moving on to unit analysis, one step. Unit analysis, it's a very powerful way to convert units. And it's a method that uses what we call conversion factors. You'll see what those are in just a second. What you do is you take the measurement that you want to convert and you multiply it by the correct conversion factor. And in the process, you get to cancel the units that you don't want from top to bottom. Okay. Well, what does all this stuff even mean? I'm just going to demo it for you. So let's suppose we want to convert 25.1 centimeters to meters. Now this is a very simple conversion. You don't need unit analysis for something like this. However, I still want to demonstrate to you how the process works so that when you get, well, to conversions that are not quite so simple, the process still works the same way. So to begin with, just write out the measurement that's given that we want to convert, and then we start multiplying. Okay. These are all one-step problems, so we're actually only going to have to multiply by one conversion factor. Well, what's a conversion factor? Well, think about it. Centimeters to meters. Okay. What's the connection between those two units? How many centimeters are in a millimeter? Well, you should know that there are 100 of them. Okay. So to write it as a conversion factor, we put 100 centimeters on the bottom, and then on top we put one meter. Okay. These are equivalent to each other. Now you may ask, does it matter which order do, that I write them? Could I put the centimeters on top and the meters on the bottom? Well, the answer is no, because you want the units to cancel from top to bottom. Okay. So if I had these in reverse order, the centimeters wouldn't cancel. See, I've got centimeters here and then centimeters below, so those cancel out. Okay. So the only unit that I'm left with is the meter, which is actually what I want. So how do you work out this calculation? To work this out, we read it as 25.1 times 1 over 100, or times 100th. Well, you should know that when you multiply by a fraction, like 1 over 100, that is exactly the same thing as just dividing by 100. So all we have to do is take 25.1 and divide it by 100, which is very simple to do. The decimal is actually going to shift two places to the left. So I end up with 0 0.251, but the units now are meters. Let's do another one. Convert 2.04 kilometers to meters. Okay. Now, again, you don't need unit analysis for this. I would expect you in your head to know that that is 2,040 meters. But let's just use the process anyway. So I write out my measurement, okay, and it is given in kilometers. And now I want to go to meters. So what's the conversion factor for that? Okay. What is the connection between kilometers and meters? Well, you should know that for every kilometer, there are 1,000 meters. Okay. Well, which one goes on top, which one goes on bottom? Well, remember, we want units to cancel. So in order for these kilometers here to cancel, they have to cancel with kilometers down here in the denominator. So that leaves me no choice. The one kilometer has to go here, which forces me to put the 1,000 meters in the numerator because I want these units to cancel out. And the only unit I'm left with is meters, which is exactly what I want. So let's work out this number here. So this is 2.04 times 1,000 over 1, or just times 1,000. Well, you should be able to multiply a number by 1,000. The decimal will actually just shift to the right three spots. So this gives me 2,040, and this is now in meters. Okay. 